Hey, here's the section uh, cut composite drawing tutorial. Uh, we're going to try to do something like this in Photoshop and kick it out from um, SketchUp using some different uh, techniques. Uh, I'm going to say that I've already set this up. I've got a section that I like. You know, you can make sections here. You can plop them wherever you want. Uh, you can show the section plane. Uh, you can display the section cut. See, that has no cut at all. I can turn it on and off. Uh, and then that just allows me to use the tool, the section tool. I'm going to stay on the selection tool for now. Uh, but let's say I like this scene uh, and I want to export it and start doing some things with it in Photoshop. I, um, one of the things I'll note about where I'm at, I like that there's a cut line that goes all the way across the screen like this so that I can, you know, have a nice uh, cut all the way through. It's not like there's a little bit missing over here or something over there. Or, you know, it's not getting all floaty and weird. It's just staying where it needs to be, right where I want it, right there. And that's one of the things that I will point out, too, is that as I move around, I can always go back to that exact same spot, which is essential for keeping everything layered correctly. And the easiest way to do that is to get to a view that you really like and then add the scene right there in that scene. So I'm going to export this for to start, export 2D graphic. And I'm going to call that shaded 3. Uh, you know, I'll just call it whatever. And then what I want to do is go into the options. I have it as a PNG. So PNG is in here right there. Good, strong image. I'm going to go to options, uncheck the view size. 8,000 pixels wide is, tends to be a pretty good one for, you know, doing 11 by 17. And keep those two checked. Make sure the lines are anti-aliased and you have a transparent background. And then you and then you'll click export. After you click export, it's probably going to take a couple of minutes for it to show up. But then eventually it will, and then you'll have your, you can go into File, Open, uh, and figure out where that is, and Shade it 3, and open it up, and then it'll look something like this. And this checkered back means that, that it is transparent. That means we can add something in the back and in the foreground, which is exactly what we want. So one of the things that's hard about this, though, is to if I want to color in, you know, the section cut, and I want to do it in a way that doesn't require me sitting around here with a, a polygonal lasso for 10 hours, and I want to get a really clean, crisp, uh, accurate way to do that. The paint bucket is the best tool. It's paint buckets right here. If it's if you see the gradient tool, you can uh, click your left mouse button and hold it down, go over the paint bucket, and that'll fill things in. But it's really hard when there's all these lines. So I want to just get the cut line. So I'm going to go to SketchUp, and I am going to edit this style. So I'm in the styles, edit. I'm going to turn off on the edges thing. I'm going to turn off edges and profiles. On the face, I'm going to go to display all shaded the same. And then uh, on the back color, I want both of these to be white. And when you bring this up, you you might see this. Uh, which, and if you just do this, it's not going to get you to pure white. So if you go to RGB, you can slide all these all the way over. And then you get to white. Just like that. And then, you know, I'm still seeing some stuff. So what I want to do is go into shadows and use the sun for shading. Make sure that's checked. And then bring both of these to white. There I go. And then I can file, export, 2D graphic. Make sure it's the exact same settings here, exact same dimensions. It should be by default. Save it off as cut line. Uh, hit export. I already did, so I'll show you what that is. And then I'll go over here to export. And then I'll go file, place embedded. There's my cut line that I just made. And place. And it should place it in exactly the right spot by default. And I'm just going to hit enter. So it's in there, now it's placed. Uh, now what I can do with this cut line is I can multiply it. And there it is in place, and there it is not in place. With it not with, with the other guy turned off, I can go to my, now I can go to my paint bucket tool and say I want to pick a color here. I'm going to do red for a foreground color. This is your foreground and background color. By default, your paint bucket does the foreground color. Um, and you can see right here, it's not going to let me do it. It's giving me this uh, uh, do not enter sign. If I click somewhere, it'll say, will you please rasterize? Okay, I will. And then you can do this. Boink. Boink. I'm going to zoom in. I hold down my Alt key and mouse wheel to zoom in. Boink. Boop. Boink. And I'm going to hit all this stuff, even the glass. You know, I'm going to fill all this stuff in. Whoop, I don't want to fill that in because that's basement. Um, there. It looks like this is actually supposed to be filled in, maybe. Not exactly sure how that all goes, but, you know, I'm guessing. One of the things you'll notice is that my model isn't perfect, and that's okay. We can work with it. We can work with an imperfect model. It's not a big deal. Um, 
The other thing uh, you can do with the paint bucket is adjust its tolerance. So kind of in here, see how it's like doing little bits at a time? I can increase the tolerance and go to like 50, and it should do a little bit more. Not yeah, much, but maybe a little bit more. You can play with that if you want. Doesn't That, that stuff isn't really important to me right now. I'm just kind of getting these things filled in. Um, looks like there's a wall here. And so on and so forth. I'm cruising along here. I'm just going to kind of get it all filled in. Oops, didn't want to do that. I kind of like keeping that black line. That's just my personal preference. Um, and then the other thing I want to do is be really consistent about how I'm cutting this, which means I probably want to have all of this down here be red. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. That. And just click on all of these things and just get them all filled in. I don't I don't mind the lines being there. And you can see where there is basement space. I'm kind of leaving that as space, but I am uh, you know doing the cut fill where where else where in the other places where it needs to be. I ah, hit that line again. It's kind of funny. It's not quite, you know, these little tiny little spots, but I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Okay, here we go. Got to get a little bit of stuff in here. And there we go. There's my cut plane uh, completely expressed. So obviously I can't, you know, I, I, I want to be able to have this show behind it without the, maybe I don't want this multiply. Maybe I really want that to be solid. What I can do is in here, now that I have this as white, I can select, and all the rest is red, I can select the color range that is white. Make sure I'm on that layer. There I can see it. I'll maybe turn the fuzziness way up so that I make sure to get all of it. Hit OK. And then hit Delete. Uh, did it get? Yep, we got all of it. There it goes. And then I can do that now. As soon as my computer decides to do it, it will do it. Oh. deselect and then I can turn off the multiply and just go to normal and now it should show it nice and flat so there it is so I've got my cut now the other thing I want to do is that wireframe right because this has a cool wireframe it's also got some cool effects going on with the background maybe I want to bring in a sky so one of the places I can do to get a sky is go to a place called textures.com and textures.com has has a thing called landscapes and I can look at some landscapes and maybe I want to just do a simple green landscape. Uh, maybe I you know, want something in here that uh, has some interesting clouds or something. Interesting. This is a really interesting sky, doesn't it? And then I can download this. You may, it, may need to, it may ask you to, to log in and that's fine. But this now that goes to my downloads folder. So I can go file, uh, place embedded. Uh, I can go to my downloads folder, and there it is, place. It's really small, right? So, but I can go like this, put it up here. And then and then you notice if I hit that corner, it'll scale it like this. If I hold down the shift key, boop, then it keeps that thing scaled correctly. And then I'm going to hit enter, and that places it. And then, you know, it's overriding everything else, so I want to put this all the way on the bottom like that. And there it is. There's the sky in the background. Now I can move it up and down. You know, I'm not sure how much I want of those trees in there. They're kind of, they don't look like they really belong in that landscape, do they? So I'm just going to sort of leave that, maybe just kind of have them poking up just a little bit like that. Maybe not even. Something like that. Okay, now I want to do the wireframe. So I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to go into the uh, styles again, up here in the styles. Whoops, I did not want to do that. I could go back to my scene here and um, go into my styles and I'm gonna to go to the wireframe style and there it is. Crazy, right? Lots of lines. But what I really like about this is it shows the complexity of the project. So I am gonna go ahead and export that as a 2D graphic. And this one might take a while. This is gonna be my wireframe uh, three. I, I want it to be the same. I wanna add alias transparent background. I wanna do all that good stuff, hit okay. 
I'm going to export, and that's going to take a while. So we're going to come back to that. So here I am, and it's looking good. Maybe I want some other people in there. Maybe I want a tree out, out uh, or two out here. One of the things I can do to do that is I can go to, um, there's a, that's what they call Ronin, whoops, Ro, come on, Ronin Beakerman, and he has a little thing called freebies. If I go to his freebies page, uh, there's a place where I can get some stuff, and lots of free cutout people. One of the funny ones, I think, is this this website, Skal Gubar. Uh, I think they're hilarious, and they've got all these kinds of funny cutout people. Um, you know, maybe I want to uh, get a, do the, I don't know, the, what do I want in my scene? Uh, let's do this person on a motorcycle. And I want to right-click and save image as. I'll put it in this same folder. I'll save it. And then the other thing I can do is go to free cutout. Dot com and they have trees and they have trees and also have people and leaves and all kinds of stuff and maybe I want to get this big cutout tree I'm going to click on the name big cutout tree here's the download uh, that image is coming through I'm going to see if my oh yep my wireframe is already through so while that's downloading I'm going to go in and, and uh, import my wireframe place embedded uh, documents wireframe Place should put it right where it needs to be. Looks like it put it down there so I can't see it. I'm going to move it. Uh, maybe I need to place it first. Let's hit enter, place it, and then I'll move it up. There it is. I really like that. I like how it shows the complexity of the project. That's just my personal preference. I really also like that I can see bits of the, the, the building in different places that I can't see otherwise. Um, you know, maybe I want to play around with the opacity of it, and maybe I want that opacity to be a little bit lighter. I want it to be more subtle than, you know, that dark. Um, you know, I can mess around with that and do whatever I want to do. Um, it's possible I might want to do that even with layer zero, that I might want to mess with the opacity. So that's that's all that. But then I can go ahead and, let's see, let me get that tree while we're here. Save image as, uh, tree, save. Uh, and I've got a couple other trees and people in there, so I'm going to import and um, place embedded and I've got the person and the tree place the guy on the scooter and I'm going to put him so that his eye level is at my eye level so wherever you know right about there is eye level right we'll do that I don't know if he's going to be inside why not why not why, why not put him inside huh but you can see all the way along here he's kind of at eye level and he's kind of to scale Let's say he's about to crash into the glass. He's, he's right there. And then I'm going to put that tree in there. Um, place embedded tree. Uh, maybe I want that tree to be over here. And I'm, I think I'm going to need to scale him down. Again, I'm holding down the shift key. But you can see what happens if I do that. It's the, the tree. Um, is a total cutout so it just stays right where it needs to be it's doing a great job of that okay so i've got that and now all i want to do maybe is adjust some things right so maybe in the um the background the layer zero um i want to do some things maybe i want to adjust the brightness and contrast of it um maybe i want to adjust the opacity of it you know, and play around with how opaque it is. I might want it to be totally opaque. It looks like it looks best that way. Um, but, you know, maybe the, the wireframe I want to mess around with, how intense that is, how much I can see that in there. I can just sort of, you know, it's from there it's sort of seasoned to taste. Uh, and that's my image. That's my final uh, cut uh, section image. And I've done it, right? I've done this. There you go. I'm happy. The end. Have fun.